Welcome back, fight fans, to another episode of BTR Boxing Podcast. And today, I've got a brilliant guest on who's going to be talking about an upcoming boxing film and how long is it since we've seen a, a boxing film come to the cinema and, and come online. We're really excited to be talking to Chris Soriano today, who is the actor and director of the upcoming movie, Zeus. Chris, thank you for coming on today. Thank you so much for having me. What a pleasure. Appreciate it. So... Let's get straight into what we're here to talk about today. We're talking about a movie that you are acting in. You, you've got the lead role in this particular movie. You're also putting your other hat on as well as a director. And you're directing this, this what looks like a brilliant movie. I've personally watched the trailer. I've seen uh, a glimpse of, of what's to come with the movie. And uh, I've got lots of questions, that which I'm sure you'll... Uh, You'll be able to answer to, to some degree, of course, without giving too much away. But first and foremost, the movie itself then, Chris, you just talk me through the reason behind this movie coming about. Yes, great question. Uh, this film was something that I saw. Um, I connected it with all these these hate crimes that were happening. And um, you know, I've never seen something like this in my life. You know, I, I was born and raised here in San Diego. Both my parents, uh, Filipinos, immigrated to America. And uh, when these hate crimes started happening, I just, I knew when I saw old ladies collapse, getting punched, people getting killed, I said, man, what would happen if that actually happened to a professional fighter, a trained fighter, a boxer? And then from there, I said, I, I'm, I'm going to write a little paragraph just to see if I could come up with something to contribute and provide justice or figure something out. And then that turned into a full 120 page screenplay. And, you know, uh, no experience making movies, but I said, you know, if I can make something to contribute to make a difference, I feel like I would have succeeded. And so that's pretty much what I did. Was there anything in particular, any particular incidents, say over the past 16, 17 months that that's really hit a note with you that's kind of led you to, to sit down and, and write about something like this, which has turned into the movie? Uh, no particular instances or incidents for me, but what I saw on, on the news with like this old lady in New York being set on fire and um, from other Filipino Americans and, you know, Filipinos being killed, you know, it just made me go, whoa, this is, this is developing into something that um, I just hope doesn't get worse. And so um, I know through the sport of boxing, there's so much to be learned before you even enter into the ring to fight. Um, because that's your trained fighter. And I, I know there's so much beauty in that journey. And I, I wanted that to be uh, a be a big key component in this in this uh, film, Zeus. So just tell me a little bit about Zeus, the character then. Um, obviously, the movie's coming out. We'll talk about that towards uh, the end of the show when it's actually due for release. But without giving too much away and spoiling it too much for the fans that are going to look to watch this, uh, just give a little bit of an insight into who Zeus is and, and what Zeus is all about. Yes, uh, Zeus is a uh, amateur fighter that's trying to make it in this world of boxing, uh, especially in this tough time of the pandemic. So it takes place in 2019. So pretty modern um, March of 2019. And, you know, um, whether it's a pandemic, whether it's anything, boxers are still going to want to fight. They're still going to want to compete. And um, our character Zeus sees a hate crime and he decides to step in and help. And that inciting incident where an old man is getting bullied, he steps in to stop that and he gets into a fight. And that fight is what ends up going viral. And so the middleweight champion sees this and uh, Zeus is kind of like, you know, uh, I'm ready to challenge whoever it takes because I do want to fight. I do want a shot in the ring. And so he's an underdog that doesn't really have much, lives at home with his mom and uh, is, is still dreaming to become a fighter. And, you know, in the Asian culture, Filipino culture, if you're not doing a stable security, uh, a good job with security and you're dreaming, man, it's a whole wor wor world of hurt for you outside of the ring there from your family. So uh, that's what our character is going through. So this is a good mixture of uh, a bit of an underdog story with a, a, a real agenda behind it in the sense that it's, it is all about raising awareness of Asian hate crimes. That's predominantly the, the reason for bringing this to the forefront. But it's got a good mixture of an underdog story in there as well, like you've mentioned there and explained a little bit about the character Zeus. And the, the trailer itself, you know, it looks it looks great. It's, it's, it's got all the little bits of action. It tells a little bit of a story in itself without giving too much away. And when you were, when you were putting this together, 
did we, did you put this together with yourself in mind as the as the lead actor, or did you just think you know there's somebody else maybe that'd suit the part for this? How did that come about? Such a beautiful question. Um, no one's ever asked me that, and um, I originally wanted to just direct and write it. Um, and but to find a boxer and to find a Filipino boxer and to find someone that was trained. I mean, there was there was so much I would have to do and be against time. And so I said, you know, perhaps I could have a chance at doing this to save us more money to really just I'm already doing the research because I wrote it. And so I said, let me put myself in that mode. And if I can do it, then I'll, I'll continue and commit. And um, it got to a point where I was like, I can't even have an option to hire someone else now. I have to commit because we're so against time. And so that's how the uh, role of me got into the place uh, of, of being Zeus. So just a little bit into your background then, Chris. Um, th is this the first movie that you've actually played the lead role in? Yes, this is the first movie I, I played a lead role in. I have made short films that never really went anywhere. So this is the first of everything, uh, completing it end to end. It, it was like, you know, we had our own fight. You know, we didn't know if COVID would shut us down. I remember in the first day of production, I said, if anyone out of all of us gets COVID, this whole thing is shut down. You know, it's according to the CDC and, you know, we can't continue. So we all have to be mindful of everything we do. Um, and if someone's feeling sick, they got to go home. So, but thank God nobody got COVID and we all went through it together. So how much pressure have you felt with relating to being a director and also playing that lead role and, and, and obviously the pressure that comes with, with being a lead actor in a film? Oh, a lot of pressure. It was more like you got to figure it out on the spot and you got to make, you got to figure it out and, and give people the trust that you can do this. And when people see it in your eyes that you don't know what you're doing, they know. And like, <laughs> you know, you better change that look quick because it could, it could kill morale. And so I would, honesty was such a big key. And if I didn't know something and somebody was like, swap that lens out for this lens, I'm like, all right, bro, I don't know that lens. Could somebody show me what that lens is, you know, so we could just get into this. Oh, okay, yes, yeah, a 50. Let's use it, you know, so oh, we're doing a close up. We're So, you know, a lot of, um, uh, you know, I knew if I faked the funk, it would be over for us in a heartbeat. So I, I had to really work with my trusted partners to, to accomplish the mission at hand. One of the most interesting facts, obviously, about this particular film is that it's got a certain Filipino legend who's an executive producer on the film in The Great Manny Pacquiao. Where where did his involvement come into play? Did he get in touch with you in relation to wanting to be a part of this project? I reached out to him right when we were done because I felt like when we were done, we finished this film. It was, you know, we put our everything, hard work, almost, you know, we're threatening our lives, you know, COVID, we didn't know what was going to happen, you know, so we, but we did it under the same humble mental attitude of just completion. And right when we finished, um, we said, well, since we don't have names, nobody really knows us. Maybe somebody up there who's got a big name could help us raise awareness of this film, raise awareness of these issues. And that same day, Manny Pacquiao posted uh, fight me instead on his Instagram. And I said, man, this is a sign from the heavens. I got to reach out to this guy. So I DM'd him on Instagram and I said, you know, uh, we would greatly appreciate if you could raise awareness of these, you know, we're fighting for the same mission. And they responded to me and I almost thought like they're going to ignore me, you know, 6 million plus followers, the yeah. biggest name in the Philippines. He's probably not going to pay attention to me. And he did. And he said he'd love to support it. And he, you know, his, his name and everything, that reputation, he trusted with us. And so uh, it got spotlight, CNN, NBC, you know, you name it. And it was such a blessing. So has anybody had the opportunity to see, other than yourself, to see the, the final cut of the movie now? Has there been anyone in the press or anybody that's been able to actually sit down and see this movie and, and, and provide you sort of some initial feedback before it goes out to the general public? Yes, we, we had um, distributors reached out to us and, you know, they, um, some big time, you know, I signed some NDAs to not reveal it. Um, but, uh, you know, also in the Philippines, they said, we want to, you know, showcase this. And, uh, you know, literally just last night, we um, uh, signed a deal with a distributor to get this out uh, worldwide. So we're really, really blessed for that. And, um, you know, typically films take years to make, you know, 
the behind the scenes to end to end. And, you know, we did everything in that 90 day window. So it's, uh, we did it at speed. And um, maybe that's an incentive to show people that even in the toughest of times, this is arguably the most tough time to make a movie, uh, the pandemic, right? And we were able to do it with no experience. And I hope that encourages people that whether you don't have boxing experience or you don't have movie making experience, if your mission is more important than you, then you'll find a way to do it. And that's what we do. So regards to yourself then, Chris, are, are you, have you always been a boxing fan yourself? Is that partly uh, what inspired you to, to, to sit and write this, this screenplay and, and turn it into a movie? Yes, I've always been a huge boxing fan just because uh, to me, there's, there's something about, you know, balling up your fist, facing your opponent and, you know, you could do combinations and stuff. You could do all that work before you step in the ring. But man, when you get punched that first time, it, it's something else, you know, it, you, that shows your courage that, and it, I was always fascinated with that, but I'd never had professional boxing training. I've always had that uncle that would show me, all right, jab, jab, straight hook, you know, bob and weave. But so for this film specifically, we had like two months or a month just to prepare. It was very quick. I was preparing while still filming. Like after filming, I'd go to boxing sessions. And uh, I, I went to the House of Boxing in San Diego. Uh, Canelo Alvarez is trained out of there. A lot of, you know, great uh, legends as well as up and comers. And so they trained me uh, every day. You know, they worked with me and they said, you know, we're going to make you look like a fighter and we're going to teach you all the basics. So that was very important to me because I know the boxing community is going to be watching. So, hey, you know, it may not be the best or it may be the best. We'll see. <laughs> Well, talk about some of the other uh, some of the other characters uh, in this. Obviously, there is a uh, there is the main antagonist of the story. If you want to touch a little bit on on the background of the antagonist of this particular story, sure. His name is Rob Rodeo Cooper, and he is the middleweight champion in the world. And so he pretty much uh, sees that viral video of me beating up somebody at the park as what he saw to his angle, and he said, "Man, that's so un-American. Who's this guy punching random dudes in the street?" I'm going to teach this guy a lesson. And, you know, it unfortunately happens that his mother dies to COVID and his trainers and his people are kind of manipulating him, telling him, you know, maybe, you know, these Asian people are to blame. Maybe, you know, not really citing it, but, you know, there, there is a unifying message at the end. You'll see. But it's an interesting um, perspective. You know, how would you feel if you lost your mom to COVID and, you know, you see some random Asian dude punching, beating up random people? You know, what what dots will you connect and uh, how will it result when we go in the ring and hash it out? So. so what's interesting to me is that there's definitely a lot of elements of this particular movie uh, that I've read about, that I've seen in the trailer, that, that, that sort of hits a note really in terms of it's so relatable to the current society, the current culture, the way things have been uh, during the course of this pandemic that when you was... When you were sitting and writing it and unsure when you were filming it, that must have were, were there moments where you honestly could you could feel it's you know so touching as in like I know this sort of stuff is going on every single day on the streets of America uh, in the streets of different countries around the world. Was there any moments where you just stop and just think to yourself, you know, wow, this we're, we're putting something together here that will hopefully will bring so much awareness to people that will uh, shame these people that are committing these types of atrocities day in, day out? Yes, there was. And that's a very great question because, you know, I wanted uh, the audience to see that perspective of, you know, um, hand sanitizer being sprayed on an old man, which I took from an actual case that happened. And I took it a step further by putting my actual father in that scene and, you know, I, I put him in a mask. Nobody will know it's him. But I, I wanted to feel as close as possible. If this was a loved one, how would I feel as an actor? And so, you know, that scene where the guy spraying, that's my dad, who's, you know, <laughs> getting bullied. And I step in there. And, you know, so uh, I, I hope people will take away um, that, you know, there this is not a particular race that's doing all these hate crimes. It's not a uh, particular person. It's, it's all unique case by case situations that are usually stemmed from something deeper, something that, um, you know, it, it's all dependent on the person. So nonetheless, yeah, that, that, that's my dad in that scene. <laughs> wow. What did he feel about doing the, uh, doing the movie with you, even just for that, that, that cameo appearance? Ah, he, he was so, supportive we actually threw hand sanitizer at him i said we're gonna get you but we're not gonna put it in your eyes but we you know pops i hope you'll take one for the team here 
we, we need a little bit more realism. And so we did that take about like nine times. So he was like doused it in hand sanitizer. It was, it was kind of funny, but you know, Hey, you know, at the end of the day, you know, that's what family does. They, they support their, their kids, I guess, no matter what for a greater cause. So let's just move away from the movie just for a moment, only really to talk about other projects that you're involved in. Uh, looking at your background, there's something that you're involved in, the, the Dynasty Boys. Um, tell me a little bit more about that and, and the other public speaking events and things that you're involved in separately aside from acting and directing. Yes, a uh, great question. Uh, Dynasty Boys was something that I started before Zeus. It was actually my my passion. That was the first film because when the pa pandemic happened, I saw the beginning of these hate crimes. And that's what Dynasty Boys was supposed to be, uh, a piece of activism toward that. But, you know, I couldn't get financing and my, my co-writer and I fell through. Like all the disastrous things happened. Yeah. And so that's when I just kept saying, man, you know, am I just going to sit here and not do anything? And months passed by and more hate crimes happened and more hate crimes happened. And I was just like, I can't, you know, when, when you're really motivated, you will find a way even when there is no way. You will, you will make a plan, you will do something. And, and that's what I did. And I saw Zeus as that, you know, uh, film, that completion. So, um, you know, as far as speaking, I try to speak anywhere I can for free um, to motivate people. Like, use my examples. Look what I've been able to do. Um, I, I didn't go to film school. Uh, I'm not advocating to not go to film school. I believe you should yeah. learn as much as you can. But I also believe that, you know, it, you don't, there, there are unorthodox ways to, to get what you want. And um, even Quentin Tarantino said, you don't have to go to film school to become a filmmaker. You don't have to know what lands above the line, crossing the lines. You just have to really be passionate and love the art of filmmaking. And you can't help but make a good film. So uh, I stick by those guns too. So. <laughs> So back to the film then, and in terms of uh, what you mentioned earlier about a uh, a worldwide release, uh, it, for people like me in the UK, there's uh, there's lots of uh, people like myself who are huge fans of the sport, uh, but also love a good story, which is what I believe this is, and this this film's all about. Uh, where where can we find this when it is released, and what date would it be available to to say us in the UK? Great question. And uh, we'll be releasing this on August 20th. Um, we'll be announcing because we just formed that partnership literally 24 hours ago. So I'll be announcing who that is here shortly, but it will be on our website, ZeusTheMovie.com. And you will be able to watch it there in the UK, uh, even in Singapore, all around the world. So um, literally such a game changer. Just last night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard, we we're able to, to make that deal happen. So we're really excited about that. Oh, fabulous. It's, um, it's, it's something exciting. It is really exciting. I'm looking forward to it, genuinely. And I'm sure the people that are listening and watching this interview uh, will be very intrigued to see what comes out of the end product and what it is that you've produced. And for, for obviously those guys that do want to follow the yourself, uh, look at the progress of yourself uh, as an actor and a, a director and a filmmaker, and also the movie itself, where can they look for on social media to find you? Yes, uh um, on our website, it's ZeusTheMovie.com. Uh, you can see all that. But also on our, our handles on social is at uh, ZeusTheFilm. So you can see it there. And um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And uh, I'm Chris Soriano if you want to check uh, that out. But also I want to invite all your uh, listeners and everyone on your platform that if you need any filmmaking advice, I remember when I was making this film, no, nobody really reached back out to me when I would contact them. And I, I knew that pain. And I think there's a clause why they can't respond to people because they could get sued if they give me. Y'all could sue me if you want. I want to give advice and help people. And so I, I you know, contact at dynastyboys.com is my email. So anybody has filmmaking advice, I, I really love to, I, filmmaking. If they need tips, I'm here. So, yeah. so finally, then, this movie, I've mentioned it a few times. It, it looks great. I'm looking forward to it. Ultimately, you've got to the end goal now you're at the you're at the point where you're ready to release this movie after everything that you've explained throughout the course of the interview that's gone on will it happen won't it happen dropouts people coming in people coming out ultimately now you're at the finishing line with this product what do you want to get out of this what do you want the reception to be from the audience and their interpretation of this particular movie oh um I'd, I'd love for the audience to to feel that if there are hate crimes happening and you see something happening, um, 
do your part to try instead of avoiding, do something to contribute to a solution. Um, you know, obviously if there's people fighting and it gets crazy, I mean, don't step in, but if you see an argument happening, which is usually where it starts, um, try to step in there and say, you know, um, is there anything I can do to help um, to diffuse the situation? Um, because if, if you can save a life that way, why not? You know, if you, if you can bring about peace, why not? So I, I'm teaching people, our, our tagline is, is stand against hate. So, you know, let's not sit back against hate, right? Let, let's do something about it. Let's, let's learn more how we can help. So, yeah. Well, Chris, you know what? It's been an absolute pleasure for you to talk us through and give us some brief information about the film. Obviously, for everybody that's watched and listened, you're going to have to go and check it out. You're going to have to check it out when it's released and watch the full movie. And, and obviously, Chris, that you know, let, let you know and drop your messages, drop your uh, tweets, whatever it is they can get in t- touch with you on. They can let you know what they think about the film. And, and I'm pretty sure you'd appreciate uh, all, all types of feedback on it. And it'll give you your step going forward for the future. Uh, It's been really a pleasure to get you on and and really discuss what Zeus the movie is all about and what it is you're trying to achieve with this and uh, everything that you've been through to try and get there. So thank you. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for telling us your story and and hope the film goes well and I hope it gets the message across that it's intended to. Thank you. This is such a blessing. I look forward to uh, seeing you for Zeus 2. We'll see. (laughs) Thank you.